Hey guys, welcome back. In order for you to be successful in your LIBF Unit 1 exam, you must prepare thoroughly. This video is the first in a 12-part series designed to assist your vision and be successful in your exam. Thank you for leaving a like and make sure you subscribe for future videos within the series. Let's get into it. In this video, we're going to look at the barter system, what money actually is, the features of money, as well as what are the functions of money. So starting off with the barter system, bartering involves someone exchanging the goods or services that they produce with someone else who has the goods or services to offer. Essentially, uh, the system relies on a double coincidence of wants. That means that what someone has, someone else wants, and vice versa, in order for the two parties to agree a rate of exchange. An example might be a shoemaker swapping a pair of shoes with a person who makes trousers. So the, both of them need what the other has, and therefore they can have a double coincidence of once. Does it always work that way? Of course not. Unfortunately, it relies on someone else wanting what you have, and vice versa. Therefore, the bartering system is inherently flawed, which requires us to have money. Now, money is anything that is widely accepted as a means of making payments. In the modern day era, we find that money includes things like coins, notes, and of course the electronic balance that we held in our bank account. But what are the features of money? Well, money has to be divisible, we have to be able to split it into smaller amounts in order to buy smaller items. It has to be durable, i.e. it has to survive the test of time and maintain its value and not be perishable, i.e. it can't be using a banana or an orange as a form of money because it will go off and perish over time. It needs to come in denominations and it also needs to be recognisable. Other people need to recognise it as money in order for it to function as money. It needs to be scarce, but it needs to be sufficient. There can't be too much of it, but also there can't be too little of it. It needs to be homogenous, it all needs to look similar in nature, so that it can be recognisable as money, and it needs to be accepted in a wide number of stores or businesses for it to be functional. It also needs to be portable, people need to be able to carry it around easily in order for it to be functional. Now, talking of the functions, the functions of monies are fourfold. First one being a measure of value. We can measure the value of something in terms of money. For example, a packet of crisps will cost less money than a gaming console, for example. And therefore, it can measure the value of different things. It can also be a medium of exchange. We can exchange it with someone else for a good or service that they provide. It is also a store of value. A store of value essentially means that if I give someone an hour of my time in, the, in work, then they can give me money in return, essentially storing the value that I have given them, given them in that hour of work. And finally, we can use it as a method of deferred payment. Because money, as we talked about earlier, maintains its value, we can have a good or service and agree to pay for it later on, essentially deferring the payment because money, as we said, maintains its value. Those are the four functions of money. So, some key words that we need to know about when it comes to money and the functions of it. Firstly, barter. Barter is to exchange goods and services for other goods and services without using money. Remember, it depends and is reliant upon a double coincidence of wants. The double coincidence of wants, of course, is where a situation in which two people have goods or services to trade, and each of those people wants what the other provides. Divisible is when it's easily divided into amounts of different value. Of course, we need to make sure that we can divide it up because there are smaller items to pay for and larger items. Durable, it needs to be able to be used in many transactions and won't perish and or go off. It needs to come in denominations, so a group of coins or notes that share the same value. Money, of course, as we know, is a medium to exchange for goods and services, and we 
class money as coins, notes or electronic balances. And it needs to be portable, essentially to be small and light enough to be able to carry around easily. It needs to be homogenous, so it needs to look and feel the same as other coins and notes of the same denomination. It needs to be accepted widely in our society in order for it to be functional. It needs to be recognisable so it can be easily identified and accepted as genuine money. And it also needs to be scarce but sufficient to be able available in sufficient quantities to meet people's needs, but not in such quantities that the value of the money itself falls. So, on the screen are three multiple choice questions in order to test your understanding of this topic. The first one is which of the following is a function of money? Is it a means of A, ensuring the stability of value, B, a means of exchange, C, a means of guaranteeing credit, or D, a means of improving a person's credit rating. The answer to question one is B. Money can be exchanged for goods and services, therefore it is a means of exchange. The question two is for money to function as intended, it needs to be A, acceptable, B, fixed in value, C, no longer, no older, sorry, than five years, or D, unrecognisable? The answer to question number two is A. Money needs to be accepted by banks, shops and people for it to function. And the third question, which of the following is known as cash? Is it A, coins only, B, notes only, C. Notes and coins only. Or D. Notes, coins and bank account balances. The answer to question three is C. Whereas notes, coins and bank account balances are known as money, just notes and coins are known as cash. Thanks for hitting that like button if you found this content useful. Now make sure you hit that banner to access the second video in this series.